Hello best learners, this is Mustafa here at Learn With Best and today we're going to be talking about Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, Law Number 14, Pose as a Friend but Work as a Spy. I'm going to start this video by defining the law for you and then we're going to talk about how relevant this law is in today's world. I'm going to draw out an example for you to depict how you can control the chessboard and then we'll end the video with a fun little story from my past. Here's the law. Knowing about your rival is critical. Use spies to gather valuable information that will keep you a step ahead. Better still, play the spy yourself. In polite social encounters, learn to probe. Ask indirect questions to get people to reveal their weaknesses and intentions. There is no occasion that is not an opportunity for artful spying. This is quite a Machiavellian law. This is one of those laws that you have to practice with care. You should know it so that you can spot when it's being used on you. However, I do not believe that you need to necessarily practice this law on other people unless absolutely necessary. Think of it as a good tool to have just in case you need it. My logic for this is because I strongly believe that the person we should be having a rivalry with is ourselves and not others. I want to be a better version of myself today than I was yesterday. I have strong ingrained habits that keep me from doing the things that I know I need to do in order to follow my purpose. Therefore, I am my own worst enemy. I procrastinate through watching Netflix, playing video games, or overindulging on chocolate peanut butter ice cream. If I want to be the best version of myself, then I need to compete with myself and not with others. Humankind has evolved over hundreds of thousands of years, if not tens of millions of years, and over all of that time, we did not have society and structure the way that we do now. There are things like our cell phones or the internet that we take so much for granted today, but we forget that just a few decades ago, these things weren't even invented or at least not widely available. And depending on where you live, you may enjoy certain freedoms that other people do not. There are people all over the world being slaughtered, imprisoned, and sold into slavery. If you ingrain this simple fact into your mind, then I hope that you will at least come to understand that the only person you should really be competing with is yourself and not others. You do not need to trouble yourself by keeping up with the Joneses. For the most part, it simply does not matter what other people are doing and it is not worth even an iota of your time to concern yourself with keeping up with the Joneses. If your so-called rival achieves 10 times the success that you do, it does not matter. It has no bearing on your life. If your so-called rival achieves 10 times less success than you, it does not matter. It has no bearing on your life. Having said that, it is important for us to study this law so that we can detect when it is being used against us. We want to know when others are using this law on us because it will reveal the inner workings of their mind. And we want to understand the inner workings of the minds of everyone that we let into our lives so that we can determine if they are worth having around. Now let's look at a few examples, but before we do that, I need your help with YouTube's algorithm. Please smash that thumbs up button below, because if you don't, then YouTube is simply not going to show this video to anyone else. Please also subscribe and click on the bell icon, because if you don't, then again, YouTube won't let you know when a new video is uploaded. And if you want to transform yourself from a lamb to a lion, then check out my course pinned in the top comment below. I will teach you the tools that you need for success, but you have to actually step up and put in the work on yourself. This course is not for everyone because the majority of the population are sheep, but for those very few of us who do want to walk the path of a lion, this is the course for you. Okay, so say you have a friend that you graduated college with in the same field of study. So you should both be earning relatively the same amount of income in your jobs because you're both starting as, I don't know, let's say financial loan officers for this example. You see your friend once or twice a year and on this particular hangout section, he asks you how much money you're making. Okay, so he may be a bit of an envious type because he's comparing himself to you. You also deduce that he may be a bit insecure with his own life and that he's using a measuring stick to measure himself against you based on a monetary value. 
Before we answer his question, I want to make it clear to you that you don't want to ask him the same question back. Instead, you want to study his reaction to your answer, and in doing so, you will learn the truth about how much he's earning. The nonverbal is many times more revealing than the verbal. So now you have a choice to make. Do you tell him the truth that you are making, let's say, $50,000 a year? Do you lie and tell him you're making $30,000 a year? Or do you lie and tell him that you're making $80,000 a year? If you tell him the truth that you're making $50,000 a year, what you want to do is you want to study his reaction. If he's relieved, it means that he's making more than you and he can rest comfortably knowing that in his mind he's achieved more success than you. On the other hand, if he gets visibly agitated and asks you further questions, it means he's making less than you and he is now envious. If you lie and you tell him you're making $30,000 a year, you are trying to disarm him because you already know he's making much more than that. The uncomfortable subject of money will disappear because he will no longer see you as a rival and instead he will see you as not even on the same playing field. This is a good way to rid yourself of a possible envious type. It's particularly a good strategy to use with family members because you may not be able to so easily cut them out of your life as you could a friend or an acquaintance. If you lie and you tell him you're making $80,000 a year, now you are trying to reveal more about his character because you already know he's making less than that. You're trying to see to what extent he will go in his jealousy. If he cuts the time short and says he has things to do, it means that it really infuriated him that you are achieving more monetary success than he is. It may be a good idea to cut ties now. On the other hand, if he seems happy for you and he asks you how you got to that level of success, then he's seeing you as a great success story and he generally just wants to improve himself by extracting some of your wisdom and implementing it into his own life. Now I want to share a fun little story with you about how one of my narcissistic relatives have tried using this law on me in the past. You see, every time we have a family gathering, a particular relative of mine would ask me some irrelevant, dumb question like, hey, what road did you use to get here? So I would think it's just an innocent question and I would reply with, oh yeah, uh, you know, we used 83 to get here. Then later, after the family gathering was over, I would find out that my relative had asked my girlfriend the same question. At first, I'd think that the person was just trying to make conversation, but this particular relative would do this at every single family gathering that we would have over the years. What this person is really trying to do is they're trying to see if our stories match up. They're posing as a friend, but working as a spy. And it wasn't just about, you know, hey, what road did you use to get here? This person would ask me all sorts of questions in private and then ask my girlfriend the same set of questions to see if everything was checking out. And why would they do this, right? It seems pretty stupid. Well, they do it to gossip, basically as social currency. That's basically the pathetic structure in the extended family circle. So as I got older and more experienced, I learned to blow this person off completely by responding with something completely ridiculous. For instance, if I was asked what road I used to get to the event, I would respond loudly, Oh yeah, man, we went down the yellow brick road, made a left at Mordor Avenue, waved to the all-seeing eye, and then made a right at the medium-sized average-looking tree. They got the message, and they never asked me or my girlfriends another dumb question like that ever again. So in closing, let's wrap this video up with the understanding that this law, posing as a friend but working as a spy, should be understood only so you can spot when it's being used against you. And personally, I would not use this law against anyone unless it's being used on me first. If you like my YouTube content and you want more, then please check out my Patreon link pinned in the top comment below. I upload new videos every Friday for my Patreon subscribers that go deeper into my own life regarding the 48 laws. These videos are a bit more raw and untamed than my usual videos here on YouTube. And if you're a patron of mine already, then I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because it's people like you that truly make all of this content even possible in the first place. I hope you enjoyed this animated video on Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, Law Number 14, Pose as a Friend, Work as a Spy. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one. Hey sweetheart, can you tell me how this sounds? Oh, ha, 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 ha. That sounds cute. <laughs> Moo, ha, 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 Moo, ha, 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 ha. Oh, jeez.
try that again. Mm-hmm. <laughs>